I'll welcome you to where I find my ships, where I try to help you learn a little bit more about some of the base ships in Starfield, and most importantly, some methods on how to get them. And today, we're going to be looking at the crossbow. I mean, Crimson Fleet White Mark III. Someone please explain to me why they called this ship white when it is a poo color. <laughs> Don't know why they did that, but it's almost a meme. If you did not know, the crossbow and the white and the Spacer Hyena Mark III are identical ships. The crossbow you can purchase at majority of the technicians at level 38 for the crossbow Mark II and level 72 for the crossbow of Mark III. Now seeing how the crossbow and the crimson white are identical ships, we can interchange this guide between the two as the only difference is that the white has a terrible poo brown color. <laughs> it's grown on me, but I'm not a huge fan of the color. I much prefer the crossbow look and that's why the crossbow is on the thumbnail. Just note that this is primarily focused on just getting crimson white mark one, two, and three and the crossbow you purchase at your local technician. So where do the crimson white and crossbow sit from a value perspective? Well, they basically tie in ninth place. We'll take a closer look at the cargo because this is what's changed between the two, but I'm just going to say they're identical. Coming in at roughly 558,000, which makes a lot of sense when you start looking at some of the components and look at the damage. The damage puts the crossbow and the white tie in for fifth position. Has a remarkable shield health coming in at seventh place. Now, this is where the downside is for the Crimson White and Crossbow, is it only has a jump of 18. It has quite an ordinary grav drive on it. So the first thing I would do, or I did, is upgrade the grav drive. You won't be able to get very far. You can't jump to those really far out systems like Hawking's. But do note, it's probably the first thing you want to upgrade on this ship, is the grav drive. It has a crew of seven, which is excellent reactor of 40 so we'll come back to the reactor but it of course being 40 it's going to be one of the top reactors this is the only difference between the crimson white and crossbow i thought they were completely identical but apparently there is a slight difference between the cargo but nothing to really make any kind of real difference which could potentially make the weight slightly different but it's so marginal you would just say they're identical and they have the same fuel let's have a look under the hull and see what's powering and working behind this bad boy for the power source is the S40 Sheared Flow Reactor. This is one out of the two reactors that provide a power generation of 40. The second most expensive at 81,000 with a level unlock of 57. Pretty much getting the second or third best reactor in the game straight off the bat if you can get this which means it can really power any modifications you want to make. Next, we have the disappointing NG300 Grav Drive. This Grav Drive has a level unlock of 12. This is probably one of the worst Grav Drive I've seen on any Mark III Class C ship. I guess the Crimson don't need to travel too far from their own home system. It costs 18,000 and it only requires Starship Design or Rank 1. Moving on to the engines, I absolutely enjoy the way these engines look and the white and crossbow have been equipped with the Sal 6110 engine. This isn't a particularly potent engine. It has a level unlock of 39, only requires starship design or rank one, but where it makes up for its pretty average overall stats is that it only requires a power of two, which means you can put six of these bad boys onto your ship, which will give you a combined rust of 81,000 and a combined maneuvering of 22,000 but you can see with the maneuverability this is the reason that the white crossbow have a terrible mobility of 41 so just like the grav drive the second thing i upgraded was the engines you could put the sal 3830 engine on this and this ship would be a rockin as you can put six of those which will always give you basically the highest combined thrust and maneuvering thrust so that's definitely an option to consider is upgrading the engines and last thing to mention is that it only costs 22,000 each which definitely makes this much more of an accessible engine early game and next what kind of shield is going to be protecting us from those pesky uc ships well we have the odin 350c shield generator the third most expensive shield generator in all the game with a level unlock of 57 it's an 11 bar shield giving you a health of 1315 with a five percent regenerate this is probably the sixth or seventh best shield that you can get with a 120 HP per one power bar. So you probably don't need to worry about upgrading the shield. I would leave this for sure. Now, moving on to what is probably the most overproportioned weapon system. The next we have a weapon I'm really excited to talk about because I'm pretty sure this is the first time we've ever looked at this particular laser weapon. And this is the third most expensive laser weapon at 33,000. And it's the, we have the Reza 300 Petahertz SX Pulse Laser Turret. Oof. It's the longest name as well. Now the Reza 300 requires full power, so you can only put three onto your ship. 
but with all three, you get the highest combined shield damage in all of Starfield at 456 if you have all three. And you're looking at a top five combined hull damage of 132 if you have all three. The range is 1000, so not particularly great, but not too bad. But this is really cool to see because it is a, it a very potent laser turret. So all I would do, I would just add another Reza 300 straight onto the ship, giving it max stats. Really cool to see this. I don't think too many Class C ships in Starfield have this weapon. Very unique, the crossbow and white. Next, we have a more common weapon you see in Starfield, which is the, I believe the correct pronunciation is Uki Masu 50k missile launcher. This has the second highest required level unlock at level 57 at a value of 21,000. Does require a power of four, so you can only stick three of them onto your ship, which would give you a combined hull and shield damage of a 408. Putting this at the sixth highest shield and hull damage missile launcher in Starfield. But the Tsukimasu 50k also has the highest range or one of the highest range at 4,050. And the last but definitely not the least, we have the Make 9A Auto Gauss Gun, which is the second most expensive ballistic weapon that you can get in all Starfield. Having the highest level unlock for all ballistic weapons at level 57. Now it does require a power of four, so you can only attach three of these bad boys onto your vessel which when combined would give you a whopping 444 hull damage and 132 shield damage. And of course, this is a Starship Design Rank 4. So as mentioned before, the only difference between these two ships is the cargo. So the crossbow has two 300 cm cargo holds, whereas the Crimson Fleet White only has 300 cm and a 200 cm. Don't know why they made one slight change like that, but otherwise they're identical. So we'll just go through what you need to have. There's a really good system to find these bad boys. Now, what we're going to need, we're going to need piloting rank four so we can pilot class C ships. If you do not have this, you will not have access to fly the Prophecy Mark III. You need class B, obviously, to fly the Mark II, and then you don't need anything to fly A class. Other thing we're going to need is because this is going to be an orbital assault, we're going to need rank one of the targeting control systems. We can lock and load and take out the shield engine grav drive and so we can dock with the ship the other thing you're really going to need is ship parts i suggest you bring a ton of ship parts and the final bits you're going to need you want to be able to build at least one mission board on an outpost which is four aluminium two beryllium two zero wire but i suggest doubling this because the best and quickest method for using the mission board process is to build at least two outposts in the same system now, I've already gone into quite a bit of detail in another video, so I'll link that up the top. You can check that out if you need a bit more info on using this method, but we'll go through some of the basics and what you need to know so you can do it just watching this video. But this will be a sure way to get the Crimson Fleet White Mark 1, 2 or 3 within 30 minutes to an hour. So the caveats to this, I don't suggest using this method if you have joined the Crimson Fleet faction. You kill too many Crimson Fleet ships, you will get disbanded. The mission board method will be level locked. So say you're level 0 to 30, you're probably only going to get missions for the Mark 1, possibly the Mark 2, and then I'd say anywhere from 30 to say 60. You could be getting missions to pick up Mark 2, and then once you're at level 64 or above, you should be able to get missions for the Crimson Fleet White Mark 3. The good thing about doing it this way is that you can get paid, capture the Mark 3, you'll get XP, and this method can be quicker than jumping around to a different system, trying to get it in orbit. Most definitely quicker than trying to use the reload and save trick because that can be a little challenging to actually generate that. Even in the higher 75 planets, really does depend. It's too inconsistent to be able to give you a good location. But I will have a few suggestions at the end of where you can go try to find them on land and in orbit. You do have the option not to build an outpost. The method we're going to be using only requires you to find a general mission board, which you can find at most civilian outposts. So do note, you don't need to build an outpost for this. You can just find a city outpost, go to the mission board there and use this very same technique. But for this example, I'll just be showing you the method I use myself, which I think will probably be the quickest way to get the mission board quest to go destroy a Crimson Fleet White Mark III. So I'm going to assume you found your planet or moon and you built an outpost and you've built a mission board and you're over level 62. You open the mission board and what have we got? We've got destroy a crimson fleet, right? And a rate doesn't say mark three. Don't really want these missions. So we are going to actually accept all of these. Yes, we're going to accept them all, but we're actually not going to do them. So we're going to accept them all. Then we want to come into our mission menu 
and then we're going to reject them. For me, it's X. I'm not exactly sure what it is on console, but we are just going to reject all these missions. So we've originally accepted them and then we just thrown them in the bin. We don't want to do them. Once you've rejected the missions, you want to fly to orbit. Now you can just fly to the, the current system orbit. That should also reset it, but sometimes it won't. So it tends to be better to fly to a different moon or planet orbit and then come straight back. And now we'll have the mission board here. We'll have missions again. So we've got this time we've got a Crimson Fleet Haunt Mark III. Not really what we're after, though we would accept. And then we are going to reject them and then rinse and repeat. We'll go to orbit. Ooh, and now we'll head back, open it. We should have some new missions. Okay, so no new missions. So what we'll do is we will delete it, exit out of the build, build the mission board again. And there we go. And you can see again, we've got Destroy the Crimson Fleet Haunt Mark III. Don't want that one. But you would keep repeating this process till you finally get a mission that will say Destroy the Crimson Fleet White Mark III. But my preferred method for doing this is having two outposts within the same system. And then all we are doing is we're just going to jump between them. We're going to have a look at this mission board, see what it has. Notice it has the same. So of course we have to accept all of these. You don't have to technically accept these ones, but I just do that just in case. Then we're going to reject these ones. Then we're going to travel to the other outpost. And we can see here that it has reset, not the ones we want. We will take them, we will reject them, then we'll head back to the other outpost. And we just keep doing that until we would finally get the ship we're after. So one tip that I noticed that may help you do this quicker is to go to the mission board and accept one of the missions, destroy a Crimson Fleet, complete that mission, come back, and it seems to potentially increase the chances of getting the Mark III quest. So I definitely could recommend trying that, at least trying to complete one mission and then keep farming this process. So then you'll find that you may get to destroy the Crimson Fleet Mark III. So to get this, it took me an hour. I've done this four times, each time with a different ship. So I'm gonna give you some really important tips, especially if you're around the 60 level and you have an average ship, this can be quite tricky. So the first and extremely important tip, we need to make at least two saves. So you can make a save as soon as you've accepted the mission to get the white Mark III. And then the other save will be as soon as you enter orbit, and you can see that you're in front of the white Mark III. The other really important tip, make sure you have your ship properly configured. Make sure you have all your weapons at the levels you want. Make sure your ship is fully repaired. If you have a terrible ship, put this down to very easy. If you have a very overpowered ship, put this on to very hard. So at least if we have a couple different saves, if we haven't configured everything perfectly, or we need to go back and get a different ship, we can go back to the very first save or if we just need to try again because we've destroyed it or it destroyed us, we can go back to the save in orbit. Really important tip, because this way you can test to see if you're up for the challenge or if you need a better upgraded vessel. Okay, so let's say you've got it all sorted. You've jumped into orbit. You're ready to take the Crimson Fleet on. Note that sometimes it will just be one ship and that is the ideal situation. Other times you'll get jumped by four, four to three other vessels. I think the difficulty can impact this, so again, it can be a good idea to set this to very easy before jumping into orbit with the white. But having those saves will give you that flexibility to test that out if you have any issues. But let's say it's all gone well. You didn't do what I did. Jumped in there with a broken ass ship and had it on very hard. Got destroyed multiple times. It took me about 15 minutes in honest to get this because I jumped in with a terrible, badly damaged ship. If I set it to too easy, my guns would destroy it too quick. If I set it to too hard, I'd get annihilated. But that's why that tip to save is very important. But otherwise, you've destroyed all the other ships and you've isolated the white and left it to last. Destroy the grav drive. You destroyed the engines. Now you can dock. And from this point on, it's pretty straightforward. But what I will do is I will give you a rundown quickly of how to get to the cockpit from the door, from your starting position, because you can get a bit lost in this ship. And I think this is a handy tip to have. Okay, so you've jumped on board from your starting location. You'll need to clear the, the level below you, and then you'll need to follow this path to get to the cockpit. So you're basically doing a big loop and you go straight to the top level and then you'll have the cockpit. Looks really simple, but if you don't know, you get a lost. Now, I was gonna go through some other tips on other places to find this on land and orbit, but run out of time. This video has taken way too long. So lots of information to provide, but I hope you got something out of this. And this will give you the Crimson, Crimson Fleet White Mark 
Mark III. It's a tremendous ship. Looks awesome. You can repaint it so it actually looks a lot better than the poo brown. Thank you so much for watching and I appreciate your time and I hope you got something out of this. Please consider liking and subscribing if you did. Peace till next time.